So among my collection of fabric and thread and sewing notions, I have a little collection of vintage sewing books. So in today's video, I'm going to share those with you and I'm going to read the dedication from my oldest book published in 1911 so that you can see how women were thinking 110 years ago. Hello my sewing bees and welcome to Suki Sews and on this channel I provide expert guidance for sewing, machine embroidery, and notion reviews. So if these things sound interesting, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I have a small collection of vintage sewing books that I have collected over the years. The first one I ever got was when I was around 13 years old and I have held tight to all of my vintage things for all these years. So let's go ahead and start opening these books. So I decided to start with my newest to the oldest, and this one had an original published date of 1961, then 70, and then 72. This is probably my personal oldest book, only because I got this one at a, at a garage sale when I was around 12, 13 years old. And I always liked this one because it has these tabs and I kind of wish somebody would make a book like this now. It's got the binder so you can lay it perfectly flat and then the tabs are really clear what it is and you just flip to it. I just, I've always thought it was really well organized and you know, you got your pattern cutting and the like talks about the interfacing, everything. I do however think it's a little uh, all over the place. It goes from like very beginning to um, the one I think it's really kind of funny is tailoring tricks on coats. You know, most of us don't, you know, go from basics to tailoring right away. <laughs> but because this book was published um, over the course of 11 years, it was obviously a, a really well published book. It was, you know, well received and, and really loved. Um, I do have to just share with you though, I love this little section here. Wardrobe planning, <laughs> key accessories to suit colors. And just look how they've got it all laid out. I mean, this is kind of like Pinterest, you know, for the, uh, for the uh, 60s and 70s. So just look how cute this is though. And then this is really great. I love this. This is the wrong way to wear a hat. And this is the right way to wear a hat based on your figure and your size. So yeah, really cute. And um, there is even a section on sewing for the home. So like, again, it's kind of all over the place. It really encompasses a lot. You know, we're even talking about um, sewing a slip cover. <laughs> so it's really, really all over and it's got lots to cover. I guess the idea was to give you a sewing book that would last the ages, you know, for your entire sewing career. I have to share this with you too. Look at the way they've got this little sewing room organized. I always thought this was really cool. So this is the Better Homes and Gardens sewing book. The next up is the Golden Rule and it's actually a pattern making book. Now once you see this you might recognize the concept of it. The whole idea is that you flip through and you find the pattern, the design that you want to make and then you go and you find the actual little pattern piece inside the book. So let's just say for fun, all right, let's say we're gonna pick out, if I wanna make this right here. So you look at the number, it's 99, and then you flip in the back and you'll see little tiny pattern pieces. So then you find the pattern that you're looking for, which we we're gonna do 99, so here it is, here's all the little pieces, and then the person who owned this book obviously printed a copy of this, but this is the measuring tool. And the whole idea of this golden rule system is that you take two measurements. You take your bust measurement and you take your hip measurement. And whatever those are, you then take the little ruler guide and you put it in the center of each pattern piece and you go out to wherever the number is that's based on your measurements. So I remember doing this like once when I first got this book. I got this book when I was in college um, and I'm not sure if I printed this. I don't even remember actually making anything out of it, but this system is called the Golden Rule and I'm not sure how long it's been around, but this book, I couldn't find a published date, but if you look at the pattern and the designs, it's definitely, I would say early 60s. I mean, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, indications of that. 
And, um, but yeah, this, this book is really cool and I'm glad that I have a piece of history. Although I have to say that the Golden Rule has a new system out and I'm really anxious to try it out um, with modern patterns and our modern ruler system. But this one right here I have is definitely a treasure. The next book I have is the How to Design Beautiful Clothes designing and pattern making. Now this book I've had for quite a while. I got this when I was in junior high and behind us where we lived there was a, a, like an antique shop and I loved looking through the antique shop and I had discovered a whole series of books which I'm going to show you another one in a minute and then a bunch of vintage magazines and I remember talking to the like the owner of the store and convincing her to let me work for her and not get money, but in exchange for all the vintage books and the patterns and everything she had. So I've had these in my collection for a great many years. <laughs> but what's cool is this is actually a pattern designing book. Um, there are some basics in the very beginning of how to take, how to design, you know, your basic pattern, your like sloper but then how to expand on it. So how to take a basic skirt and add the flounce at the front. Um, but I have to share with you that when my brother got married, um, I made all the dresses for the bridesmaids. And this sleeve right here was the actual sleeve and the exact pattern that I used to create the sleeve. So I always thought that was kind of cool that this book I did actually use when uh, my brother and his wife got married. So, but there's so much in this. This, this I'll tell you, if you'd made a pattern every day, you would have plenty of things to do with this book. The next is actually a series of four books and they have an original published date of 1935, but then they were also republished in 37, 41, and then the final reprint that I have, the setup, was in 1949. So I think it's interesting because I have the book I just showed you was also from 1949, but you can tell that they kept a lot of the information from the original publish, which was in 35. I mean, sewing still is two pieces of material put together and sewn together, um, but there's so many new techniques that have come out even, I mean, even in this, in the, um, uh, 15 years of the publishing on this book so much was improved but I did I mean like right here this is definitely from you know the 30s maybe more so than the four, late 40s into the 50s um, the fit everything would have changed but your basic construction methods would still remain the same so the series is from the Women's Institute of Domestic Arts and Science in Scranton Pennsylvania and the be, the first one was First Steps in Dressmaking, Cutting and Fitting, and this one is particularly uh, technical. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot of images. It was a, it's a lot of words, but I mean, right here, it talks about matching your plaids. So that's still something that we still learn today. Um, this was a very, this one's definitely a technical book though. The next one I think is really cool, Underwear and Lingerie. I mean, over the decades, there probably hasn't even been a handful of books published for underwear and lingerie, um, but there are some really great pattern designers that have things like this nowadays. But just look at this. Look at the beautiful um, image on this and the detail. There's some really lovely illustrations. And I can't tell if it's an illustration or a photograph, but I'm, I'm thinking it's, I think he, I, I, I don't know. I feel like this is an illustration um, painting, but just really lovely did a nice job but yeah check out the the lingerie on these ladies i mean this is what people wear out in public now <laughs> so the way things have changed um and the last in this series is called dress making trimming and finishing so this is you know obviously the end of the series where you're going to really refine your skin your sewing skills and how you're putting everything together there's lots of illustrations in this particular copy and really really wonderful details but again i'm just i can't tell if it's a photograph but i really feel like it's a beautiful painted illustration so they did a really nice job on this series of books i can't say that i ever actually used them uh, other than they have been a part of my video photo set for as long as i've been doing videos somehow they've been in there just because it's a really cool collection i also got this set from cleaning the antique shop <laughs> 
Now we're going to go back a little bit further to 1927, and this is The Art of Dressmaking, and this was published by Butterick. I love this book. It is just beautiful. It's like a piece of art, and you can just see every image was totally from the 20s. And I mean, even look at the fitting, how our bodies are, you know, our bodies are the same that they were a hundred years ago. But the way that styles and fashions have changed, it's just amazing to me. So there's even like, look at this little flapper girl, how to measure your head. They've got something for children. Look at this, Look, check, check out this handsome devil. <laughs> We've got how to uh, measure for a men's patterns. Um, just, oh, I just love this book so much. There's so many cool illustrations in here. And these are definitely drawings. But even like, look at this cool trick. It's like a little, um, like sewing hacks for the 20s <laughs> of how to use this little notch, just a piece of cardboard. Just amazing. I love it so much. This is probably one of my favorites. I've even thought of photocopying this and making it larger and putting it on my wall as art. Because, you know, check out this girl. She's got her machine and, you know, she's got a pretty window here. She's able to look out. And, um, oh, right here it says, keep your sewing machine in a convenient place in the sewing room so that it is always ready for use. Boy, isn't that the truth? That's still the truth. Oh, and look at this. She's got her dress form that looks just like her with that fitted, you know, 1920s style. I love this one too. This would be another one that would be nice to print. Oh, but here, definitely my favorite. Check it out. This girl is actually got everything laid out. Can you imagine having a table <laughs> like this? Like how cool is this? But she's got all of her information here on how to lay out and cut your pattern. So I would say this is probably one of my favorites. I definitely treasure this. Um, again, this was from 1927 and it is The Art of Dressmaking by Butterick. My absolute prized possession when it comes to my vintage sewing books is my oldest, which is from 1911. So we're talking 110 years ago, and this is not only a book on how to sew, it's also a book on how to start your own sewing academy, which is really hot. I mean, nowadays, think about all the online sewing academies there are. Well, this lady right here, Madame Edith Marie Karens, she kind of started it. So this book, it's had some wear on it, and it's definitely, in, I try and take really good care of it, but I wish I could find someone who could professionally restore this book without losing the integrity. But whoever the original owner here, it looks like it was December 1912, and it was Miss Ella G. White um, from Massachusetts. So yeah, right here though, it talks about become a graduate design, a dressmaker, and then you can take this Madam, Madam Edith Marie Karen's Academy, like how cool, um, copyrighted in 1911, August 1911. And I have to share this dedication to her readers. To all ambitious girls and women with a desire to improve their present conditions and make themselves independent and self-supporting, this little book is dedicated. I mean, what an empowering book. I mean, it's just so cool. Um, so the way that this book is set up, like I said, is how to sew. And then at the end of each lesson, she has rules to remember and questions to review. So she is definitely teaching you how to sew. And look at this right here. These are all of the hand stitching and sewing machine stitching methods. Then the next is, I think this one's really cool. I was reading in here, the five gourd skirt. Okay, lesson two, five gourd skirt. Okay, again, not only are you gonna learn how to make the five gourd skirt, you're also going to, you're, you're also going to learn how to teach it to others. Now, I do have to show this, because this obviously has been in here for many, many years, but it is famous popular songs. So, this was, in 1905 and it is in the shade of the old apple tree and then it has the lyrics like how cool is that and uh, just a little bit on the back here 
so I, I like to keep that in there because it's a little bit of history inside a little bit of history. There's another one here, and this doesn't have a date on it, but this is also famous popular songs, Silver Threads Among the Gold. That's interesting, it's very appropriate since we are looking at a book of fabric and threads. And here we go, there's not a ton of illustrations as you can see, it's completely technical, um, based completely on the, the, the words and the dialogue in this book. But I wanted to show you, there is, there's right here, here's your five cord skirt. And number 42, it says the plain waist shirt showing one half of the pattern basted. Oh, just love it, just so cool. Oh, right here, there we go. There's another, there's a seven gore, four gourd skirt, seven, 15 gore skirt, and straight plaited skirt. And then this is one I wanted to share, was this right here. We've got plain semi-fitted long coat. I mean, again, can you imagine this being one of the lessons that you take? <laughs> but it is really cool because in here she talks about, now once you've learned how to do this, and once your students have learned how to do this, you can now you know you can now make your own sewing um, boutique and make things for people, or you can be a teacher. It's really neat. So right here, this is another like advertisement: stylishly dressed women use McCall's patterns. And then there's like a little advertisement here for it. And then McCall's patterns are so simple, and you can send for a free catalog. How cool! Maybe we should. We should write the address down and, and uh, send a, I'd like to get my free catalog. <laughs> so again, this is my absolute most prized possession from 1911. That's the dress making self-taught by Madame Edith Marie Karens. Well, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you have a vintage sewing book, let me know the title and the publish date in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more things like this, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course you can follow me everywhere at Suki Sews. Now, if you want to see my top five most you know, current sewing books, the ones that I really love and I reference all the time, then check this video out where I go over them and I tell you the reasons why I like them and you're probably going to like them as well. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.